Hello and welcome. Last time we looked at the OneWire protocol and how it stands alone in providing fast, low power communications and power over just a single wire. And today we'll look at some of the applications for this technique. We're going to focus on three areas one wire authenticators, one wire memories, and one wire temperature sensors, including those packaged as I buttons. We should talk about I buttons for just a moment. They're rugged little packages, a little larger than a dime, that contain a one wire device and very frequently a battery. Now, the great thing about an I button is that it can operate independently, for example, measuring and recording temperatures and then communicate the recorded information on demand. And we'll talk more about that later. Of all the applications for one wire technology, authentication is one of the most popular. And here's why. For some products, failure or malfunction may present a legal liability issue. Now, you think about medical products. If a surgical tool, a patient monitor, or a sensor probe fails, the consequences could be life-threatening, and yet, in the rush to save money, there's a strong incentive to use consumables that might look the same and appear to work the same, but they may not have the same quality control or reliability as the genuine article. If medical consumables aren't genuine or are used beyond a specified use count, the manufacturer might be blamed for any negative outcomes, and that's why it makes sense to put an authenticator in the tool, probe, or monitor. That way, the instrument to which the tool connects can verify that the device is genuine and in good working order before allowing it to operate. Hey, the same thing goes for consumer goods. A counterfeit AC adapter may present a fire risk, and a third-party print cartridge might contain low-quality ink that could jam a printhead. The point is, a lot of trouble can be avoided by just authenticating that the products are genuine. But how? Well, Maxim is here to help with a whole catalog of one-wire authenticators. Take the DS28E50. It's a one-wire device that includes a SHA-3256 engine for secure, symmetric authentication. And with Maxim's chip DNA technology, any attempt to tamper with the device will render it inoperable. For some medical applications, it's necessary for the device to survive sterilization via gamma irradiation. The DS28E83 and the DS28E84 are one-wire devices that can resist up to 75 kilograys of gamma exposure. These devices can perform either symmetric or asymmetric authentication using either SHA-2 or ECDSA. Now, one thing to keep in mind, your microcontroller host doesn't have to manage either the security aspect or the one-wire protocol. You can use a device like the DS2477, it has the SHA-3 engine built in to communicate with any number of DS28E50 authenticators and an I2C to one wire translator. It sure makes the authentication job a lot easier. And if you really want to do the host side crypto yourself, you can use something like the DS2484 I2C to one wire master controller. It provides a low power sleep mode and level shifters to make the interface job easy. And of course you can go down the no additional devices route and implement the one wire protocol in software if you prefer. Hey, it's all up to you. Sometimes your application just needs a small amount of non-volatile memory to store a serial number or calibration parameters. Well, that's what the DS28E07 is for. It's a tiny device and it stores one kilobit of non-volatile data. Now, since it also contains that 64-bit unique ROM ID that's common to every OneWire device, you can use that ROM ID as a serial number and then use the memory space for whatever else it is you need to store. Now, of course, very commonly, what you really need is removable non-volatile storage. And for that need, an I button is the perfect choice. Think about it. Let's say your employees might use an I button as a token that allows them to check out a vehicle. They'd scan their I button and it would unlock only the vehicle I buttons to which that employee is authorized. 
then anyone can check to see who has the vehicle because it's all automatically tracked. Or think about checking out a medical reagent from a storage cabinet. Remove the reagent from the cabinet, scan the I button, and then when you scan it back in, you can tell the system how much was used, and the system keeps track of reagent levels and age. For those applications, Maxim makes a whole range of iButton products, from simple devices with just a ROM ID, to non-volatile RAM and EEPROM, to complete authenticators in a can. Here's a great example of where one-wire temperature sensors can really make a difference. It's a server rack with several shelves that contain server blades and a power distribution unit at the top. Now, it's critical that temperatures be kept under control. A rack going over temperature may be a sign of impending failure. Temperature sensors on each shelf, and maybe even on each blade, report the temperature back to the PDU, and the PDU reports the temperature array back to a management system. Now, obviously, you don't want to have a separate wire from each shelf or every blade running back to the PDU, so the one-wire bus is a perfect solution. But there's one more issue, and it's not so obvious. Sequencing. What's that? Well, let's say a shelf fails. The operator removes the shelf from the rack and replaces it with a spare. Fine, perfect, a disaster averted. But the problem is that now maybe a dozen one-wire devices have been removed from the system and a dozen new one-wire devices have been introduced. So how do we tell which sensor is in what position? Well, say hello to the DS28EA00. It's a one-wire thermometer designed for applications in which you might need to measure the temperature at multiple points. The DS28EA00 has two extra pins that can be used as programmed I.O., but they can also be used in an identification chain. It works like this. Connect the PIOA pin of one sensor element to the PIOB pin of the next sensor element. Now, if the sensor element is first in the chain, then you just connect its PIOB pin to ground. Now, there's a special ROM level command included that causes the sensor element to respond to a search ROM command only when its PIOB pin is grounded. When the first sensor element is identified, it switches its PIOA pin to ground to allow the next sensor element in the chain to be found. And so it goes, element after element, until the whole shelf is properly indexed. Another application for temperature measurement is a standalone thermocron in an iButton form factor. Now, thermocron is just a fancy name for a temperature data logger. On a configurable schedule, the thermocron records and timestamps the temperature it sees, creating a log of the environmental temperature that can't be altered and can't be forged. Here are four members of Maxim's data logger product family, including one hygrocron, a temperature and humidity logger. The use case is clear. Let's say you're shipping items that have to be kept refrigerated, such as medical supplies. Just toss in a thermocron. The thermocron doesn't just tell you if the temperature goes outside limits. It tells you when and for how long. Inside the thermocron is a tiny battery that keeps the device operating, and authentication mechanisms mean the results can't be altered or forged. Scan the thermocron when the package arrives, and the complete tale is told. So, has this given you any ideas? I mean, there's a lot you can do with one-wire devices from Maxim, and we just scratched the surface here. Check out the complete list of one-wire devices at MaximIntegrated.com, and let's see what we can create together.